Hello and welcome to the virtual uh, job fair, uh, where we present something from the NL Talent Coalition, um, uh, a corporation between Innovative Regions, uh, the Ministry of Economic Affairs and the RVO, the Dutch Enterprise Agency. And today we'll be talking about uh, where you can find a job as an international throughout the country, um, what you need to know if you're looking for a job as an international, mostly uh, your residence permits, uh, and some key tips and tricks about how to find a job. Uh, we'll start with an overview of the program. Um, we'll start with an introduction to the Netherlands as a, a startup hub. And this was presented by the Dutch Enterprise Agency. Um, we'll go over the residence permits. Uh, following will be uh, certain cities or regions who we'll present something about the main reasons why people uh, can should come and work in this region. We'll introduce something mostly about the work factors, but also the quality of life in the region. And we'll finish off with tips and tricks uh, to find your job. Um, if you have any questions, you can uh, you can ask them throughout the um, uh, the chat function, and we'll be able to answer them live uh, during the webinar itself. Uh, it's pre-recorded, so there will not be a Q and A function where you can ask questions to the guests. Um, you can ask them questions afterwards uh, to the various uh, organizations which are present here. First up, I want to introduce uh, Rutger de Graaf uh, from the uh, Dutch Enterprise Agency who will present about the Dutch startup ecosystem. Hey all, uh, Rutger de Graaf, uh, welcome, nice to have you here. Um, I will tell you something about the Dutch startup ecosystem and I will specifically focus on what it means as a foreign entrepreneur to come to the Netherlands and start your business. First of all, the Netherlands has a really open business climate um, and we are relatively ranked high as a good country to do business in. This means that it's easy to get your connections, to set up the company, to register the company. Uh, even our way of uh, collecting taxes is pretty structured uh, and easy to navigate for foreigners. Um, so um, uh, in the Netherlands, we have different economic sectors. And as a country, we have certain key technologies uh, where we focus on and where we invest as a government a lot of uh, time and attention to, and also financial means. Uh, and these sectors are divided over the country. So we have different clusters at different locations where we excel in these certain technologies. Uh, most of you will know the Netherlands is a country that works with water. It has a good logistics system. But in recent years, we also become one of the big players in high tech industries like the uh, semiconductor industry. But also we are one of Europeans. We are Europeans largest uh, Archie cultural and food distributor and pro producer. Um, so you will see that these industries are relatively big and traditional. We also have a big chemical industry to think about companies like Access Nobel, DSM, and even Shell. Um, yeah, uh, the focus on the, in the country is relatively high on new initiatives and uh, innovative business ideas. And uh, we value them really high as this, uh, to look at what is disrupted. And for sure with starting companies on the moment, uh, we have a system in place that highly favors innovative business ideas to be part of our ecosystem. So if you have an interesting and innovative business idea, in which you believe you can restructure the market, disrupt the market, or introduce a new product or service, then the startup visa maybe would be something for you. Uh, also, this is something we put a lot of attention to, and it's uh, we are climbing the ladder in the Global Innovation Index year by year now. Well, uh, a good example of our success uh, and, and the country's way of we uh, put money and efforts towards uh, startup and scale-ups is this overview of Dutch unicorn and scale-ups. Some of these names will not directly recognize as, oh, were they Dutch, but they all started in the Netherlands and are at this moment big international players. I think most of us has ordered some, uh, something from uh, takeaway.com or booked a hotel room using booking.com. Um, but even a lot of us will bought a flight ticket or any online purchase uh, based on the infrastructure of, uh, of Agen. Um, 
So, uh, or received an instant uh, text message from a company using the message bird uh, ecosystem. Um, in order for us to strengthen uh, the whole tech ecosystem and start a scale up ecosystem, the Netherlands put a lot of efforts towards an organizations that represent this system and help Dutch startups and scale ups um, grow into uh, world leaders and for sure European tech leaders. Uh, this organization is called TechLeap. Uh, TechLeap also just launched a startup um, and scale up job finder. Uh, later on, you will get the link there. Uh, or Gerko can put it uh, right now uh, in the chat. Uh, uh, this organization is led by one of our royals. Well, um, as you all know, the Netherlands, uh, I just mentioned it before, is one of the most connected economies, um, and, and that makes it really easy to do international trade. So. Coming from abroad, the transition to the Netherlands is relatively smooth and easy, but also to continue your startup idea from another country to the Netherlands, uh, it's relatively easy and the infrastructure is there to support you. Well, um, to give you an overview, uh, I just mentioned a lot of clusters and a lot of uh, what, what's happening in the regions. And I believe most of these regions will present and, and, and cities will present themselves later on and get into more details. But here you can see that the Red Netherlands is relatively small, even though it looks like uh, on such a map, a large country, you can get from top to bottom or from north to south in within three, three and a half hours. So most of the economic activities is in the center zone and you will see that uh, that, that, that you can travel between these hubs and districts relatively easy. So there's a lot of related variety between the regions. So they, they really strengthen themselves. Well, also uh, for the Dutch uh, startup visa, we work with facilitators that private uh, uh, or semi-public uh, uh, institutions in the Netherlands that help foreign entrepreneurs settle and grow in the Netherlands. Um, well, it's a fast track program for startup visa uh, for, for startups from outside the European Union or the uh, Switzerland. Um, what you need to apply is you need a pitch deck or a business case uh, or business plan. Then you need to partner up with an official facilitator, a recognized one. Uh, they will do the selection. They will look if you are right fit to their ecosystem. And after that, you can uh, apply, make a step-by-step -step plan what you want to achieve for the first year and get those milestones in and just start working on it. Um, and we can help you with all the introductions to the ecosystem and the facilitators. Uh, so most of the times what you can do, and Gerke will also drop my email and our general email uh, below here. Um, uh, so you can contact us directly. Um, and I will run to uh, the uh, requirements with you of the startup season one more time. Um, so they're relatively open. So you need an innovative business idea there. Explain your pitch deck, step-by-step -step plan of what you're going to do, uh, the role of yourself or your partners within the company. You can have more founders, uh, minimum criteria is 25% of the shares. Then you need sufficient means to sustain yourself during the year. And as you can see, that's a monthly fee of like uh, 1,200 euros. Uh, then there's the agreement with the recognized facilitator. And the next slide will show you an overview of all these facilitators. Then as soon as you're uh, registered, you can do that at the Chamber of Commerce. It's uh, diploma free and it's family friendly. So you can bring your family members and also have, uh, it's not a requirement that you studied or that you have a master's degree or anything like that. And after the startup year, you can easily transform your application to a self-employed. And now I'm gonna show you the overview of facilitators. They pretty widespread over the Netherlands and have different focus areas. For example, Brightlands really focus on chemical startups. A high tech Excel is connected to the University of uh, Eindhoven and really focuses on uh, high tech innovations. Health Inc. focuses on healthcare. Um, uh, port Excel is really logistics for the uh, port industry in Rotterdam. Uh, and uh, so do we have Impact Hub that's focused on impact related startups. And we have Start Life, more focused on the life sciences and agricultural startups. 
uh, Collider doing an advertising technology and yes, delved on uh, robotics and uh, uh, in, uh, artificial intelligence. Um, so it's it's widespread, it's different. Um, we also have startups that build from scratch, like Antler has a program where they match uh, potential founders. They, they have a selection process on the person and not as much on the business idea. So it really uh, differs a lot. Well, now we're going to different routes of um, uh, applications uh, and of visas. Um, Thank you very much, Rutger, for your introduction to the uh, startup network. Um, I will take over uh, to introduce a little bit about the different ways um, to reside and work in the Netherlands. Um, basically, um, if you want to stay and work in, a, in the country, you have to find uh, as a non-EU citizen. Uh, as an EU citizen, of course, you're free on the labor market and you can work uh, and stay in every European country as you like. Um, but for the residence permit schemes, for some of the international students which are watching here, you have to understand that every residence uh, purpose has a set conditions. So if you're staying here for family, for study or for work, uh, you have to follow these conditions uh, and requirements. Uh, work authorization is often included in a residence permit scheme, but not always. Uh, you may for some jobs have to ask for uh, additional authorization to work. How these permits work is that most of them work on a sponsorship basis, like um, for your study visa, visa uh, the university or um, um, University of Applied Sciences applied uh, as a sponsor for your visa. But this also works in case of the work, uh, in case of the startup visa, as Wilke just explained, you need a facilitator to sponsor your visa. Uh, and some of the uh, uh, permits also, it's your own responsibility to ask for them. Um, for example, the self-employed uh, visa as an entrepreneur, but also your orientation year, uh, which you can ask for uh, upon the graduation, uh, but also if you want to uh, gain permanent residence or naturalization to become Dutch, uh, this is your own responsibility to ask and to um, make sure that you can stay and work in the country. The most relevant permits for the people watching today um, are the orientation year permit, which is a permit where you can gain free access to the Dutch labor market uh, after you graduate. This can be when you graduate from a, a Dutch university or school or from one of the top 200 uh, universities in the world. There's three lists we use and um, you have to be, your university abroad has to be on two out of these three lists. We can share you a link uh, where you can find more information on which universities are included. It's basically a one year permit. Uh, it's non-extendable. Um, so this one year is uh, to really find a job where they can sponsor your uh, residency uh, in a different way. Um, one of the main factors about the, the orientation year permit is that you get uh, uh, access to a lower salary criterion to the highly skilled migrant scheme, uh, which is about two and a half thousand gross a month, excluding holiday pay, uh, which is a lot lower than the uh, other salary criteria for the highly skilled migrant scheme, but we come uh, to that afterwards. Um, you can apply for the orientation year uh, straight after you graduate, but you have up to three years to um, gain entry to the Netherlands for the orientation year permit as well. Uh, so you might also think what is the best situation uh, in my career, in my life, or on the Dutch job market to ask for your orientation year permit. And you can ask a new orientation year permit every time you graduate. So if you have a bachelor's of a university um, in a specific uh, uh, top 200 uh, list or a Dutch uh, degree, uh, you can apply for the orientation year permit. But you can also do it. So again, after you graduate from a master's, for example, uh, so you can uh, you can help multiple uh, uh, during this time. Um, beyond the uh, orientation year permit, you have specific uh, work residency permit schemes. Uh, which are all uh, in terms of, you know, different kinds of employment. Rutger already mentioned the startup visa. Um, we just launched an extra uh, residency permit scheme, which is called Essential Startup Personnel, which is a way where new innovative companies can hire up to five people in an easier way um, and more aligned with how startups work. Um, so, for example, you don't have to match the higher salary criteria uh, for highly skilled migrant scheme, but they can offer you a lower uh, salary 
if they make up for it when they pay shares in the company. Um, so when a startup, of course, is growing, uh, how it often works is that the new team members, they get shares um, because the company doesn't have enough money yet to pay you a higher salary. And this uh, new uh, residency permit scheme um, tries to help startups to get more international talent if they need it. Other ways to gain uh, um, authorization to work and live in the Netherlands are, for example, the self-employment scheme. Uh, you have to prove that you add value to the Dutch economy through business plans. Um, they have to be innovative. Um, uh, usually, they have to add something to the Dutch market, which is not present at the moment. And there are easier criteria for people coming from Japan and the US uh, based on long-standing treaties between these countries. Uh, many people working in universities will gain entry to uh, the scientific research permit, which is where your university or school, your knowledge institute, will sponsor your stay here. Um, it has lower sal uh, salary criteria um, than other, the other schemes, uh, but you need to be uh, aligned with one of the, uh, uh, the educational institutes in the country. Uh, mostly used for people being hired locally is the highly skilled migrant scheme. Important for this one is that you need uh, your employer needs to be a recognized sponsor of the immigration authority. Uh, this is an administrative process where they check um, whether it's financially feasible for a company to hire people, uh, whether they had any bankruptcy, for example. Uh, but it's also uh, you know, a check of um, how long the country has been in existence. Uh, there are some costs involved. So mind if you're applying to a job to check whether the company you apply to is already a recognized sponsor. There's a public register on the IND website, which we can share afterwards. We can think, okay, I want to apply for this startup, um, this Dutch company. I'm not sure if they can sponsor me. You can already check if they are not uh, hiring any other international talent already uh, when they're on the sponsorship list. Salary criteria are the main um, threshold to use the scheme, which is for people uh, 30 years uh, and above. It's 4,750 gross a month. And if people are below 30, it's 3,500. But as I mentioned before, the orientation year pyramid grants a lower salary criteria. So it makes it more accessible. Um, if you come with a spouse, people are also free um, to work on the Dutch labor market um, as a spouse uh, under the highly skilled migrant scheme. Um, other but less used um, residency permit schemes for people hired locally are the ICT directive, which means that you are uh, employed by the multinational, basically, usually by a holding in another country, and you're sent an assignment to the Netherlands. And the other one is the EU blue card, which is a, a, an EU scheme to gain entry to the EU to work and live here, uh, which has higher salary criteria than the highly skilled migrant scheme. So it's only used for people that work in multiple countries. For example, where you're partly based in uh, Germany, but also in the Netherlands. Beyond that, uh, some people might be uh, able to gain entry uh, through a family-based immigration, where one of the family members sponsors their stay here. And then the family member needs to have enough income to sponsor. Um, and the, uh, the family member who is coming in has the same kind of work authorization as the sponsor. Um, Beyond that, if you're staying here for a longer period, you can gain uh, uh, residency to the permanent residence scheme for which there's a national uh, kind, but also a European one. Um, and the ultimate one is to become Dutch through a naturalization process. The naturalization process, um, you need to integrate, but you also need to renounce your own nationality, uh, which is a, a bottleneck for uh, a lot of people, of course. Um, there's a lot of information. Uh, the IND, the Immigration Authority in the Netherlands, has a lot of you know step-by-step uh, -step approach to guide you to the process. But also the IND has a lot of advisors uh, able to help you. And you can reach out to one of the international centers throughout the country um, for guidance to understand the residency permit schemes, but also to think about what kind of permit is necessary, is most welcome. In your case, they can also help if you have a certain employer who's willing to hire you to help this employer understand how they can sponsor your residency uh, permit, for example. Um, we'll provide you a list with an overview of all the uh, international centers throughout the country at the end of the presentation. 
Um, this basically concludes a little bit of the uh, more formality side of uh, being here. Um, what we're now going to do is um, we're going to have a showcase of what makes the Netherlands attractive by uh, asking some of the uh, partners in the NL Talent Coalition to introduce you to their region and to indicate what kind of highlights are there, what kind of uh, jobs are available for internationals, but also how you can reach out uh, for help to find a job here. Uh, first up, I want to introduce Amsterdam. Uh, Rita Molenkamp uh, will introduce um, um, the benefits, uh, the key sectors of Amsterdam. Um, and she's working for international newcomers in Amsterdam, which is the international center in the region. Rita. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you, uh, Gerko, uh, for the introduction. Um, I'm uh, Rita Molenkamp Such, and I'm working for the city government, as uh, Herko already mentioned. I'm rep representing here uh, not only international newcomers, Amsterdam, but Amsterdam International Business. Uh, I'm a policy advisor uh, on the area of uh, business and people climate at Amsterdam International Business. And just because we are targeting with this presentation international an international audience, I wanted to mention that I'm international myself too. So I've experienced the whole uh, life circle, how to get a job. So maybe that gives some confidence uh, also uh, for my presentation. Uh, well, so um, and Amsterdam area are, is considered internationally um, as a region, but it's of course the whole Netherlands. Uh, what we are having here and we are very proud of is uh, the 800 years uh, tradition of uh, businesses, some of the well-known facts about our history, but I always consider as a very important part on the way how we are doing business uh, is the fact that uh, the business is on uh, actually uh, since uh, the, the golden century, not only in Amsterdam, but uh, uh, in the Dutch Republic. And, but the involvement of the government uh, was already uh, present in the 17th century. And we kept that line. So uh, that's uh, also why we uh, are working so hard on business climate and people climate, because we also see the, uh, the urgency to uh, create a place where uh, talent is feels uh, at home. Um, besides the fact, uh, the, the long tradition uh, of doing business, we are also proud of the uh, rich cultural diversity. Uh, we, um, we say Amsterdam is home to 180 uh, nationalities. Uh, our city, our region sees the uh, added value of diversity. Uh, we see diversity something which thrives our economy. And uh, so we consider our region as a nice place to, uh, to, to feel at home. Next slide, please, uh, Gerko. In terms of facts, um, I put here some of the uh, uh, very concrete details about our uh, our region. Within 30 minutes from Schiphol Airport, uh, you can find around uh, 3,600 3, uh, foreign companies. Our organization, Amsterdam International Business, is having an active uh, policy on attracting foreign direct investments. So uh, that uh, made us uh, region with a lot of foreign companies. Um, we have different uh, key sectors and the information on that uh, you can find on our website iamsterdam uh, slash business. Um, if you uh, send your contact details, I can of course send uh, the link to you. Um, we had traditionally some strong uh, industries However, with uh, the corona crisis, uh, we uh, set up a new strategy. We have a very ambitious recovery uh, agenda, and we are focusing on some uh, new 
sustainable sectors as uh, the life sciences and health, sustainable fashion, mobility, circular building, energy transition, and circular food. So I expect, uh, as a policy advisor, uh, that we will be able to generate a lot of jobs uh, around these uh, industries. Uh, at the moment, besides the 3,600 international companies, uh, we have uh, a bunch of startups. We've invested a lot in uh, strength, strengthening the startup ecosystem. We have around uh, 1,500 uh, startups in the Amsterdam region, and they are a big motor of job creation, and about 40% in Amsterdam of the total jobs uh, is created by startups. So just like a tip uh, for you, uh, if you uh, look at a nice job in, in Amsterdam area, look around at the website of uh, Startup Amsterdam. Uh, you will, I, I will have to contact details uh, later on on my slides. Um, in terms of uh, amount of internationals, we have a region where uh, we have around 100 80,000 international uh, residents. Uh, it's, it means, of course, that you that you are not alone. We have several communities and we are strengthening uh, the international communities too. A lot of companies employing a lot of internationals. So diverse workplaces, English language, work culture is uh, present. We can go to the next slide, uh, Echo. In terms of concrete tips, uh, I would like you uh, pinpoint you to two, uh, uh, one to one of the tools we created, which is the job search tool on on our iamsterdam.com page. Uh, you can uh, use this tool on a, on different ways. You can uh, type your job title, your requested job title, or you look for a concrete uh, employer. Everything is possible. Or if you can't find uh, something, uh, let me know, and we will uh, go through uh, together. Another interesting event, uh, which is coming up, Hello Amsterdam event in July. Um, we've set up an inclusive career event, uh, especially for uh, students uh, in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Uh, so if you have that profile, please visit uh, the website of Hello Amsterdam and uh, sign up. We can go, yes, and we are now uh, just at the small summary what International Newcom Amsterdam uh, is doing. It's quite similar to the services of other uh, expat centers, uh, but you can find here also our contact details. If you click through uh, the links, uh, you will find also our event page. So we are here not only for information, uh, on the practicalities, uh, that the administrative uh, procedures, but you can find our events, you can sign up uh, for our uh, newsletter or just uh, send us a mail with whatever question you have and uh, we will be there for you. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Rita, for um, indicating uh, what kind of talent Amsterdam is looking for. Um, after Amsterdam, we move to the south of the country. Um, I would like to ask Mira to present uh, what internationals can find in the Brinkport region. Yes, Herco, thank you so much. Let's see if the slide comes up. <laughs> yes, thank you. So, hey everyone, my name is uh, Mira Dresen. I uh, am international myself as well. Um, I now work for the Economical Development uh, Agency of Brainport Eindhoven. We're located all around the city of Eindhoven. Uh, and what we do as an organization is that we uh, work on a non-profit basis to uh, support the economic growth of the region. And I myself with the team focus on the talent part of it, uh, which is all focused on uh, students, but also on the labor market. So hopefully I can give you some insights in our region. And the next slide, please, Gerko. Yes. So uh, as you can see, yes, we call ourselves the most innovative technology region in Europe. Um, as uh, uh, was mentioned before already about in the startup uh, slides, we are very much focused on high-tech systems and uh, materials. 
this is our uh, where we came from. That's uh, where Philips uh, um, founded uh, our strength and our innovation character. Um, but I wanted to point out as well that uh, even though we're um, a quite a small region, we do uh, contribute quite a lot on the economical growth of the whole of the Netherlands. We are one of the, the three main ports that support the Dutch economy. Uh, and uh, what we see in our region is where uh, uh, Amsterdam and uh, Rotterdam have a very airport and seaport uh, related uh, uh, connections. We focus a lot on the brain, brains part. So we do have the smart minds and the golden hands working together uh, on technology solutions for tomorrow's world. As you can see, we have some uh, focus areas uh, focusing on food and food technology, energy and renewable energy, uh, health, especially on medtech uh, part, and also mobility, looking in smart mobility. Um, and we do that by uh, focusing on a certain key technologies, systems engineering, for example, artificial intelligence, advanced manufacturing, where additive manufacturing is part of, um, and uh, integrated photonics is one of the newer ones coming up uh, and uh, involved in, in many uh, startups and scale-ups already in our region. Uh, but also micro and nanoelectronics are very much uh, working their way up there to integrate, uh, to become more integrated in the systems. Next slide, please. Um, yes, everything uh, uh, can, can't be done without talent. Talent is the fuel of our te technolog technological engine. Uh, it's uh, the brains, it's the hands that we need. And that, I think, is why we all together here today uh, uh, share our stories and also the Brainport story. Um, we are already quite an international region. We have more than 60,000 internationals from all over the world. They do already work and study in the region. Um, and we uh, have around 5,000 startup scale-ups and world-leading companies in our region all working together, which is something that is quite unique, I think, and very much welcoming as well. You are becoming part of an ecosystem as soon as you, you work here. So you are uh, focusing on collaboration. Uh, there's uh, a lot going on uh, in support systems between companies, but also from university to companies something we try as a uh, as an ecosystem to improve as well. Um, and what we've seen also throughout the COVID crisis is that our sectors actually remain quite strong. That means that uh, even today, we are still looking for lots and lots of tech and IT uh, talent to join us. And that is something that you can, uh, help, you can be part of. So have a look uh, at uh, our job portal, a portal that creates uh, an overview of all opportunities that there are for you uh, when looking for an uh, international uh, vacancy. And on the next slide, uh, you can see um, a short uh, link where you can go to and where you can join us. And something I would like to leave you with is that um, a slogan we believe in is that we're a region where we believe that when hierarchy disappears, innovation will appear. And that is something that very much relates to our way of working together and way of being able to connect. And I hope that uh, we will connect as well. So also find me on LinkedIn and connect if you have any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mira, for introducing Brainport Island to us, um, where most uh, a lot of the high-tech uh, industry is based. Uh, after Eindhoven, we keep traveling, which is a lot easier with the virtual job fair. And because we move all the way to the north of the country, uh, where Thomas will introduce us to uh, what's happening on the career market uh, in Groningen. Thank you, Gerke. Um, my name is Thomas Ansel. I'm the Internationalization Coordinator of the International Welcome Center North in Groningen. But we serve all of the Northern Netherlands, Groningen, Friesland, and Drenthe. And if you... Uh, feel that the south of the Netherlands is a bit close and crowded, maybe you should try the northern Netherlands. We have a flourishing international market. Actually, do you know what? I had so much stuff, I had to make this map to fit everything that is going on in the north in it, and I've still missed a whole load of things. So, starting from the bottom, because I'll start from the bottom, we've got UNESCO World Heritage Sites. We have the Wadden Sea and the uh, ancient prehistoric landscape in Drenthe. But that is right next to a cutting edge agro food industry. You might have already seen Friesland Campina mentioned. It's one of the biggest dairy organizations in Europe. Well, naturally, Friesland Campina. Anyway, moving up a bit, Leuwarde, the um, uh, 
provincial capital of Friesland is not only the European capital of water technology, which is a stamp of approval given by the EU, but it was also European capital of culture in 2018. And there's a legacy project with uh, cultural activities planned all the way up until 2028. And then they're working on the next plan after that at the moment. In the north of Groningen, which is the northernmost province with a beautiful coastline, um, we've got Axo Nobel, Google and Hyperloop all setting up shop because uh, Groningen is known as the place with space to create. Um, and as evidence of that, we actually even have a Nobel Prize winner from the University of Groningen, Ben Ferringer. I've met him walking through the city. He's very nice. Uh, <laughs> part of what lots of companies up here are working on, and all of these companies did international staff, um, is we're a leading region for energy transition. We're working on green hydrogen. We're working on wind power. We're working on solar, innovative ways of uh, incorporating solar technology into buildings and on roads. And um, part of that is being run by the University of Groningen, which is a world top 100 university and probably the best in the Netherlands as well. Um, <laughs> maybe not rankings wise, but anyway, it's certainly the most innovative in the Netherlands. Um, it's so innovative that we've got some of the first green hydrogen infrastructure so that people will start to be able to use hydrogen cars in the next five years in the city of Groningen. We already have hydrogen buses, which nowhere else in the Netherlands has. Um, and in the north of Drenthe, which is one of the most beautiful provinces in uh, the Netherlands, if you like sort of landscapes and rolling fields and uh, ancient woodlands and stuff, we've got a very innovative company called Hyzon, which is building 1,500 hydrogen trucks to be exported to New Zealand. So you can't get that much more international than that. That's literally going from Groningen to the other side of the world. And something I should mention, if anybody here is into logistics or uh, transport, is that Kuforden, which is a nice little city in southern Drenthe, has a train line that goes directly to Shanghai in China, which is a way of exporting all the things that we make in the northern Netherlands. So this is just to give you an idea, there are 1.5 million people, I've written it down, there's three provinces, there's five or six cities that uh, have all got young university feelings. Kroningen, for example, the bars don't close, they don't have a closing time. Uh, we've got <laughs> tens of towns and villages. Um, it's a traditional thing in the Northern Netherlands to have a village on top of a pretty little uh, like hill that was built to keep out the flood waters before the dikes were built. We have ancient woodland, and most importantly, we have space to breathe. But anyway, can we move on to the next slide, please? I have one more slide. Yes, the main thing to think about when looking for a job in the Northern Netherlands are the, the quality of life equals the job market. So there are opportunities here in green chemistry, green energy, like I mentioned, hydrogen, agri-food, transportation, water tech and healthy aging and biotech in and around the city of Groningen, which is helped by the university and the research centers and they all work together. We've got hundreds of companies all the way from multinationals like Friesland Campina and Google down to one and two person startups. Uh, the cities of Groningen and Leuwarden have startup incubators, actually Groningen's got four or five. Uh, we have a world leading university research institute, and then there's campuses, accelerator programs, internationally known names, and they even sometimes hire a British person to present to other internationals. But the other thing to consider is the quality of life. Aside from the beautiful string of islands at the top, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and reachable within an hour of the city of Groningen, if you're lucky with the ferry. We also have culture, street theatre, street art across the cities of Groningen, uh, Leeuwarden, Assen and Emmen. Um, Groningen last week was dis discovered, revealed, to have the cleanest air of any Dutch city and pubs that have no closing time. I don't know if the two are linked, but maybe. I'm going to say the slogan again, we've got plenty of space to create, whether you want to move a business here, start a business here, work for a multinational here, or do your own thing here. There's Kroning and Friesland and Drenthe has got room for everyone. And last but not least, we have bustling cities, sweet villages, beautiful countryside, and very nice people. For more information, I would urge you to check out the International Welcome Centre North and Make It in the North. We have an English language job website uh, with um, uh, vacancies available for people that speak all sorts of languages, work in everything from chemistry through to energy, through to transportation, through to uh, water technology and biotech. So check out makeitinthenorth.nl and thank you for giving me your time and thank you, Kerko, for inviting us to take part. Thank you very much, Thomas, for the presentation about the Northern Netherlands. Um, after Groningen, uh, Friesland and Drenthe, we move over to Utrecht, which is in the center of the country again, where Jeannot from the International Welcome Center Utrecht Region 
will explain to you why you should come to Utrecht. Yes, thank you, Gerko. Now, as mentioned, as Gerko already mentioned, I'm Geno Wautse. I'm an account manager at the International Welcome Center Utrecht region. And I'm going to tell you more about the Utrecht region. Uh, Utrecht region has a huge community of international students and experts. And the International Welcome Center is there for them. Uh, Utrecht region lies in the heart of the Netherlands. For years, it has been ranking among the top three most competitive regions in Europe. What does competitive mean? This means that we offer an attractive environment to live and to work in. For example, a high quality of living, innovative and stable business climate, research and academic institutions, excellent digital infrastructure, public transportation and road infrastructure. Utrecht is well connected. From the city of Utrecht, you can get to Amsterdam Schiphol Airport or to Rotterdam in only about half an hour. And European capitals are just a few hours away. The city of Utrecht has the largest train station of the Netherlands and the largest bicycle parking of Europe. In fact, it was chosen the best cycle city in the world. In Utrecht region, this is part of our way of life. We call this healthy urban living. The cities of Utrecht and Amersfoort are often ranked among the best Dutch cities to live and work in. The region offers a combination of lively cities, peaceful villages and lots of na nature. You can find everything in the Utrecht region. Uh, one of our three key sectors is sustainability. Utrecht region ranks as the most innovative region in the Netherlands. This is no wonder because the region has the most educated workforce in the Netherlands with more than 50% holding an academic degree. In the area of sustainability, our three focuses are smart mobility, smart sustainable cities and health innovation. Life science and health is not a key sector of our region. Utrecht Science Park is the largest science park in the Netherlands. It is home to universities, medical centers, companies, and world-class research organizations. There are 27,000 people coming here to work every day. Together, they work to help people live healthier lives and sustainable cities. Because of the excellent infrastructure of the region, many medical companies have chosen to come to the Utrecht region. And not just medical companies, Utrecht region has also an attractive many multi multinational tech and IT companies. Then I come to the third key sector and that is digital. You can find here multinational companies like Capgemini and Vodafone Zigo. There are more than 10,000 IT companies and 7% of the workforce in Utrecht region is employed in the IT sector. The city of Hilversum is the hotspot for the media industry and the Dutch Game Garden is a hub for game development. Now, what to know more? Uh, we at the International Welcome Center Utrecht Region are there to help you settle in. We offer a number of free services to assist you during your arrival and stay. So for more information, visit the website utrechtregion.com or send us an email at iwc at utrechtregion.com. Thank you, Gerke. Thank you very much, Geno, for uh, presenting about uh, why people should come to Utrecht. Um, we've heard a lot of uh, presentations, but of course we can only finish with uh, the most attractive region of all, which I will do myself because I work as a policy officer for the Hague International Center. I'll present you a, li a little bit about uh, the Hague, but I will include as well our, our neighboring cities uh, for a more regional perspective and because we're closely working together to, um, on a lot of uh, uh, global challenges. Um, first up is the Hague. Um, the Hague is uh, not the capital of the Netherlands, but it's a seat of government, uh, which a lot of the, uh, the companies, multinational startups are aligned as well uh, with what the, uh, the Hague has to offer. Uh, basically, what we call it is the city of peace and justice, as it's what we call the second UN city of the world. Um, after New York, it's the only city where uh, a main body of the UN is located, which is the International Court of Justice. 
Uh, following from the International Court of Justice, there's a lot of criminal tribunals like the International Criminal Court, but also uh, has been courts for uh, the trial people from the former Yugoslavia. Um, right now, uh, Lebanon, uh, Sierra Leone, there's a lot of you know, international legal experts working in The Hague, um, but also a lot of organizations which are here for a close connection to the government um, and because they're big players on the international playing field. So there's a lot of EU agencies, for example, um, like Europol, which is trying to um, coordinate within the European police forces, but also Eurojust, which is coordinating between the justice forces and close um, to The Hague, is, for example, the European Patent Office with more than two and a half thousand internationals working there. Um, north of The Hague is then the European Space Agency with another 3,000 people working there. So there's a really big sector which is involved with the legal and policy side of the city, which is also some of the things we call if you want to uh, work in a commercial sector, The Hague might not be the best fit of you for you. But if you're looking for a purpose, if you're trying to make impact, if you want to achieve uh, and work together uh, with uh, tens of thousands of other people uh, for a better world, you should come to The Hague. Uh, part of this is also a startup ecosystem we call Impact City, uh, where a lot of people are trying to, to do good, but also to do business, uh, which is different than some of the other um, um, sectors in other countries, which are more focused on the commercial side. Um, part of this ecosystem is also what we call The Hague Security Delta, which is um, the biggest cybersecurity cluster in the Netherlands, uh, but it's also leading in Europe, where a lot of uh, cybersecurity uh, players are uh, uh, working from The Hague. So think, for example, as well about uh, NATO has an IT office here. Uh, Europol is working on cybersecurity within the EU, uh, but also there's a lot of companies trying to help the government, trying to help companies um, to be able to operate digitally in a safe uh, world. Traditionally, The Hague is the city of, uh, of energy. Uh, Shell, uh, one of the biggest uh, Dutch multinational companies, is headquartered in The Hague. Uh, and with that come a lot of other uh, national, international companies. Um, it's very close to Rotterdam, where a lot of these energy companies have um, you know, logistics uh, shops where a lot of oil uh, is being traded for the entire European continent. Um, and right now it's shifting towards uh, the energy transition. So you have, for example, a lot of windmill parks in front of The Hague at the beach, which are also operated from The Hague. And so a lot of new opportunities uh, here. Um, traditionally, it's also one of the finance clusters in The Hague. Um, not the big banks, but there's a lot of pension funds, insurance uh, firms like Nationale Nederlande, uh, Egon, which are headquartered here. And they operate throughout the world. So they have a lot of international staff uh, working here as well, um, in able to serve their customers around the world. So what we have in The Hague is a mix of multinationals, startups, NGOs, um, also research institutes, which are all closely connected to this overarching idea of the city of peace and justice. They're all trying to work to uh, accomplish SDGs. Uh, there's a few startup hubs where you might look for uh, job opportunities. Uh, the Hague Tech, uh, Security Talent is a website where a lot of cybersecurity uh, uh, postings are listed. We have a Humanity Hub where a lot of inno innovative NGOs are clustered. Uh, and Apollo 14 is where a lot of small, business, small um, yeah, social businesses are uh, uh, um, working from. Um, we are one of the only big cities uh, directly by the sea. We have 11 kilometers of coastline, which makes that we have a high quality of life, especially for... Uh, uh, for families, for example, we have also a lot of international schools. Uh, about 50% of all children in the country go to The Hague for a school, um, which creates a very uh, safe and family-friendly environment. And because of a lot of the international organizations and embassies, we also have a vibrant international community, which have been existing uh, for decades already. So we have a lot of community support, for example. Uh, for every nationality, you will find your international club in The Hague. If we move 20 minutes by train uh, to the next big city, uh, we come to Rotterdam, which is the second city of the country. Uh, Rotterdam is a really different uh, um, economic cluster than The Hague, which also means it's very easy if you base yourself in one of these regions uh, to find a diverse, um, diverse career opportunities. And you don't have to start in energy um, in The Hague only. You can move uh, for your next career step to one of the next cities because they're and um, there might be a slight 
change of perspective, uh, but a lot of connected is connected. For example, as we have the headquarters of the energy companies, a lot of the energy companies have their uh, logistics uh, based in the ha in Rotterdam because it's the biggest seaport uh, in Europe. Um, so they'll have a lot of maritime companies, but also offshore companies which operate uh, the oil and ga gas rigs uh, on the North Sea, but also a lot of the windmills are operated from Rotterdam. Um, Rotterdam is home to Unilever, uh, one of the biggest uh, agri and food companies in the world. Um, so it has a cluster as well, where a lot of people are working in the food industry, uh, but also trying to make it a more fair food industry. So a lot of innovative startups are working on this topic as well. Same goes for clean tech. Uh, there's a lot of innovation happening in Rotterdam in this specific uh, cluster. Um, Rotterdam has a, a, a leading research university called the Erasmus University. Um, and they have uh, two main components. One is the business administration sector, which um, is an indication of the uh, very fast growth in startups in uh, the city. There's a lot of people with great ideas um, trying to improve the world, uh, but also this has a, uh, a university medical center, um, which indicates that it, it's a, the life science cluster is quite big uh, and they do especially a lot of research um, closer together to Leiden, um, where I come to uh, in a later stage of the presentation. Um, Rotterdam is considered a dynamic world city, but also a gateway to Europe for a lot of companies. So if you're looking to base yourself somewhere, but also lose, use your skills, for example, with other languages, um, because you're from another country, uh, look to Rotterdam, because there's a lot of logistics companies which operate uh, from the city and they, they work from the entire European continent. Rotterdam has a as an image as a port city as be having an entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, the slogan of the city is "Make it happen." So we don't just talk; we actually uh, create the innovations ourselves. Uh, they just launched a new career website called Hack Your Career, which lists all the startup and skill up jobs in Rotterdam, uh, but also in the wider region. So um, please reach out if you're looking for jobs in Rotterdam. Um, on a monthly basis, they have talent nights in the Venture Cafe which is part of the CIC, which is a startup hub um, right in the city center. And the Erasmus has its own building with the startups, where you can also look at the Erasmus Center of Entrepreneurship, where there's a lot of startup space, but also they're also is looking for technical talent. Um, very close to The Hague and Rotterdam uh, are the cities of Delft and Leiden, uh, which basically combine uh, that we can say in the uh, South Holland area, that we have three leading research universities of the country. Um, I already mentioned the Erasmus University and their medical center, but we also have the Leiden University and the LUMC, um, which is in the news, for example, a lot because it's one of the uh, main biotech clusters in the world. It's, for example, where the Janssen vaccine has been developed and the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine is partly produced. And there's more than 20,000 people working in this biotech sector. Uh, so if you have a... a uh, background in biomedical studies, for example, uh, it's the key place uh, where you can find a job. A lot of these companies have a, a form for a mother, uh, they're multinationals themselves, so they're open for international talent. Uh, the Delft Technical University is uh, in between Rotterdam and The Hague, and there's more than, uh, you know, there's thousands of students there. Uh, I think it's high percentage of international uh, students coming from uh, non-EU countries as well uh, to study there. And it's leading in a lot of fields in Europe, but also in the world. For example, in robotics, in quantum technology, in aerospace. Um, and what they have, they have a big cluster with companies being aligned to the university on site. Um, they have the leading uh, tech incubator in Europe called Yes Delft. They also have their own talent pro uh, program, which is called Yes Talent, where they try to match uh, talents to new startups so they can grow faster because they have their team. Um, a lot of clusters are around this high-tech technology as well, uh, which are growing very fast because they get a lot of uh, subsidies for innovation as well uh, and close connections with some of the other cities we presented here. So, for example, quantum technology, uh, robotics, there's a lot of cooperation with Eindhoven as well, uh, but there's hubs in, uh, uh, in the Delft region. Um, in summary, it's also one of the attractive regions because there are so many research universities. There are so many jobs within a small region. Uh, you can base yourself in one of the cities, um, but you know you can keep looking for new career opportunities uh, because there's so many internationals working in this region. 
Um, if you want to reach out for more help to find out how you can actually find one of the jobs in this region, you can reach out to the three uh, international centers we have in the region. Uh, there's one in The Hague, which also covers Delft. Uh, Rotterdam has one and Leiden has one. And we can reach out for help in terms of finding a job, but also for permits, for example, uh, we're happy to help you. I'll share our contact details of every center uh, in the chat as well. Um, to conclude our presentation, uh, we want you to give you some key tips on actually finding a job, um, because just an overview of um, what everyone is doing is not enough, uh, because finding a job as an international can be different in your own country than in, in the Netherlands. Some key tips we always provide uh, uh, internationals with is that they have to, you know, it's a lot of expectation management. In the Netherlands, uh, it's a highly competitive labor market, but also um, we think that students have their own responsibility to find a job. There's no general exams which you can pass and then you can gain entry to uh, uh, companies, for example. It's really up to you to apply to jobs. You have to reach out to uh, to find the employers looking for your uh, for talent, you have to apply yourself. You have to go to the interviews. It's uh, it's a process where usually a lot of people apply for uh, similar jobs. Uh, so don't wait too long for uh, looking for your career. Even start within your studies to build your resume um, to gain entry to some of these uh, clusters and companies we've mentioned before. Um, important to always uh, indicate is that internationals and Dutch people do not really compete on the labor market. They usually have different roles within companies. And also some of the companies have shifted entirely uh, to hire internationally because for example, they operate in other markets. Uh, so don't think, you know, it's uh, um, uh, COVID is happening. There are no jobs anymore. Um, because what we are seeing is in most sectors, they still keep hiring internationals, but also for specific uh, job titles, which is usually where uh, internationals have specialist jobs so think about the IT skills, uh, certain language requirement if they work in sales, um, they know the culture of uh, the country where the country is operating from. Um, because if you're looking for more generalist option, uh, jobs, think about HR, account management, sales, uh, you're going to find that Dutch may be more important to learn uh, if you want to gain entry to the job market here. Uh, for a lot of specialist jobs, uh, English is going to be your working language anyway. Um, important to note is also, um, please use your advantages. We see, especially in the big cities, um, that a lot of companies, because of labor shortages, but also because they wish to work more uh, internationally, for example, to export to other European countries, that they have a lot of requirements uh, for their staff to know additional language than English or Dutch, uh, which is where, where your international experience may uh, uh, gain you uh, a foothold with, in the door. Um, you may have an advantage to Dutch people because suddenly uh, you know you know more languages, you know the culture already, uh, and also use the advantage if you have a certain residence permit to mention it already, because there are companies which are hesitant about hiring internationals because they're not aware of how the residence permits work. You explain to them uh, what kind of permits you have, what kind of options there are or reach out if you're looking for a job to one of the international centers where I can get in contact with HR of these employees to also explain the situation. Um, I know after this meeting, you also have a presentation from Undutchables, a multilingual recruitment agency, which is also one of uh, the firms who also tries to organize webinars or sessions to get your basics right if you want to apply for a job. So think about a Dutch style CV, which may be different than your own country. Um, the Dutch are very active on LinkedIn uh, as a professional network to also network with you know, potential employers. And it's important to recognize qualifications you have from abroad. It's especially something if you are working, if you studied abroad um, and you come with a degree, for example, in, uh, in healthcare, physiotherapy, uh, you're a psychologist, um, you might have to look into how these jobs are uh, in the Netherlands. You might have to recognize your qualifications or do additional training. It's also important to don't focus just on the big names. We all want to work at ASML uh, because we hear a lot about the company and it's a growing COVID, but there's a lot of, for example, suppliers uh, um, and SMEs which are working around these companies, which may uh, are also looking for talent and it may be easier to uh, start with a smaller company and move on to the bigger names. 
uh, don't only start applying to the big multinational firms. Um, alternatives we often seeing is to start your own business. Rutger started this presentation with the startup visa. Um, it's a way to also, um, you know, um, be your own boss, experiment with the ideas you had in university, um, which may grow to a bigger company, or, um, you know, you might find teammates to actually uh, join forces together. Important is um, there's a lot of traineeships, internship, volunteer uh, opportunities available where a lot of Dutch people try to gain experience um, to get to the big employers. Um, if you're just studying uh, and you don't have any uh, uh, work experience gained to an internship, you might be at a disadvantage to some other people applying for the jobs. Um, we always see that volunteering might also be a, a way where you can build your CV, also improve your Dutch, develop skills, which are, might be necessary, uh, because in the Netherlands, we consider a lot of volunteer opportunities to not just uh, uh, to give back to the community, uh, but also as a way to gain experience. So it might lead to um, gain a foothold with the next company you're looking for. Some last uh, tips. If you're looking for uh, jobs as researchers, we have an academic transfer, which is a, um, a national organization working for all the universities in the country, where there's a lot of uh, tips and tricks to gain uh, uh, entry to one of the universities uh, for funding, uh, but also the vacancies uh, which are um, listed at all the university websites. Um, Rutger already mentioned, if you're looking for a start a skill up job, uh, go to the, the next web, the new website of TechLeap. Um, the link is listed on the uh, slide, uh, where there's an overview of more almost 3,000 career opportunities at startups throughout the country. So you can check the region, but also the fields you're looking for uh, for a job, which might help you um, stay in the country. Um, if you had questions, uh, you can get in touch with your local international center. There's a list here of an overview of where the international centers are based. We'll also provide you with a list of contact details. Um, so we hope this presentation is going to help you in uh, finding your next job, but also if you're, uh, if you're stuck, uh, that we can uh, uh, schedule a call, for example, to discuss how you would uh, fit in the region and how we could help you further. Um, so I wish you well with the job search. Um, I hope it could uh, be of any assistance and I uh, hope you enjoy this uh, the rest of the virtual career fair. Thank you very much.